Okay, so we've got the Raspberry Pi set up, but one of the things, I don't really like this resolution. It's only a 720, and when we get into programming and stuff, it, it, everything on the screen is going to look big and clunky. Uh, it's fine if you're using a small LCD, but if you're using a regular size monitor, 1080p is a lot better in my opinion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to go down to Preferences, and I'm going to go to Raspberry Pi Configuration. Now when it pulls up, you can go to Display, and you can set the resolution. Now my preferred is 16, mode 16, which is 1920 by 1080 at 60 hertz. It's a 16 by 9. It's very clear. I like it a lot better. So we tell it OK. And when we tell this OK, it's going to tell us that we need to reset the Raspberry Pi. And we're going to select Yes and let the Raspberry Pi boot. And then the next video we have, I think you'll see the difference. And I think it just looks a lot better. All right, so now we are in a nice big 1080p resolution. And you'll notice when you go here, the, the, the text is a little bit clearer. You've got a lot more space on the screen, and it's just better all the way around. So if you wanted to do some programming, you could go in here and go to Thani, and you could do some um, Python. I prefer a different language. I prefer doing stuff with Gambus. And I'm going to show you why in future videos. But for right now, what I want to do is um, I want to go in and we'll set it up for Gambus. And the first thing I want to do is I want to make this thing, make sure this thing is up to date. So we're going to type in sudo. And sudo is a super user command. It says, hey, I'm going to tell you to do something. Just do it. All right. And I'm going to do apt update. What this is going to do is this is going to tell the Raspberry Pi, check all of your settings and everything and make sure you've got the, the newest, latest versions of everything. Because why should we go through the trouble of loading something into the operating system if it's an older version operating system? So we're lucky here. Everything is up to date. Now we're going to get Gambus, and I'm going to have links in the description as to where I got all this information, but I did a lot of research, and I'm making your life a lot easier. So we tell it sudo, then we tell it git apt-git, which means go out there in the internet and go find this thing and get it, then install it, and what are we going to install? Gambus 3. And it's going to go and look for it. It's going to find it. And it's going to say, hey, this thing's going to take a certain amount of memory. Do you want to continue? And we're going to say, yeah, we do. So now it's going to go through and it's going to install Gambus. It's going to download everything that it needs. And um, it's going to install it. Okay, so it's finished downloading now. And uh, if we come up here to Programming Languages, you'll notice we have Gambus 3 up here. And if I click on it, it's going to open up. Now, it's a large program, so it does take a little while to load. It's not horrible, but um, you'll just have to wait for it. So when Gambus starts up, it always shows you the tips of the day, and you can elect to have it not show you that if you want. And, and then it's going to ask you if you want to do a new project, open up a project, look for recent projects, etc. Now, where it sticks them at, it's buried very deep in the operating system, and it's a pain to find. So what I like to do is I like to make my own folder so that I can always put my stuff there and I can actually find it. So I'm going to go up here to the file manager and under home there's Pi and under that in this area I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it 
Gambus files. And then I'm going to put all my programs into that directory so that I'll be able to find it. Okay? So now we're going to do a new project. And um, just start off with the GTK2. Um, it sets up a lot of different things. And when we get to doing uh, GPIO later, this will be where you'll want to be at. So you click on this. Tell it next. And then it's going to ask you where you want to put this thing. Well, I'm going to tell it I want it under Gambus Files. And then it says, okay, what do you want to call it? I'm going to call it Intro. And uh, for the title, same thing. And we're going to tell it OK. And Gambus will start up. If we click on this right here, double click it, you'll see that we have a background form. And this is the part of Gambus that I like. We can create a visual user interface without a lot of code. So I'm going to take this, which is a label, and I'm going to drag it up here like this. Right? Then if I want to, I can do different things to it, like I can tell it to align Give it a second. First time we've run, we've run it, so it's going to be a little bit slow. A lot slow, apparently. There we go. We're going to tell it to center. And then um, I'm going to tell this. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? I want to put a border around it. There's border. And I want to have a plain border. So now it stands out a little bit, and we can see it. All right? And then um, I'm going to put a button in here. You know, you would put a button in if you were going to do something, right? Put a button in there like this, and that's button one. And if we want to, we can come in and we can change, let's say, the font on this button. And say, you see the sample text down here? So say I make the text a little bit bigger like this, and I make it bold and tell it OK, the button's text will now match that. And you see, we didn't have to do any programming to make that happen. Okay? To make something else happen, this label, for example, is called Label 1. And this button is Button 1. So if I double-click on this, here's the thing. I can tell it Label 1 dot, and now we'll do something. We'll change the caption to be equal Hello there. I guess I should just follow suit into Hello World. Because that's what you do the first time you ever write a program, right? So now that we've done that, if we go up here to Debug, we can tell it Run. And there's our thing. We click the button and it says Hello World. So that proves that it works. But the button looked kind of ugly. So... I'm going to click on the button, and if we go in here, we see that there's something called text, and I'm going to put click me. Right? So now the button says click me, and then we go to debug, and we run it. Now it looks a lot better. We click it, and it says hello world. So that's how easy it is to set up a program in Gambus. All right? So I'm going to close out of this, and we're back to the screen. Now, what we want to do is we want to add some more stuff. We want to be able to do GPIO. And so that's the next thing that we're going to do. And we're going to open up a browser to do this. And we're going to have to download and create the libraries for the um, GPIO library, which is PYGPIO. And... Uh, there was a, a gentleman that was very gracious to um, go ahead and write all that code and everything, and um, we're going to utilize his code. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get the libraries, and I put the link down here so you won't have to type this out like I did. All right, so you'll see here there's some commands that we need to do. All right, so we're going to open up a terminal, Put the terminal over here. 
So we click on the first one here and we highlight it. All right, and then we will take that and we'll copy it. We'll go to our terminal. We'll paste it in. And that's going to get the zip file and it's going to download the zip file, which doesn't take very long. Then what we need to do is we need to extract it. So we take the next line right here. Copy it. Come over here. Paste. And that will extract it. And that extracts all those files. Now what we're going to do is we're going to jump to the directory where all that stuff has been saved. And then we're going to tell it to make. And when it goes to make, it's going to do a lot of background processing to get ready to create a program. It's going to compile it down into a program. This is going to take some time. It's going to take about three or four minutes. So we'll paste that in there. We hit the button, and then we wait. So I'm not going to make you wait while I'm having this thing do its compiling. Okay, so at this point, it's done all the compiling that it needs to do. Now what we're going to do is install it. And I could either copy it or I can just type it. sudo make install. And so now it's going to go through the process and it's going to install it. So at this point in time, we should have the GPIO library available for not only Gambus, but for other software as well. So we'll come down into here a little bit further, and uh, you will see down here they've got a way of testing it. And we're going to find that. Ah, here it is, right here. That's the command I want. And we're going to go in here, and it's either going to say fail, or it's going to do a lot of testing, and it's going to say a lot of passes. And I'm hoping we get lucky and we get a lot of passes, so let's find out. So it looks like we have the GPIO libraries installed. So it'll go through and it'll continue all the testing, and there's a lot of them, and that's going to take a little bit of time. As long as it passes all of them and everything, you're ready to go, and we're ready to do the next step. So if we want to run Gambus with the GPIO, if just clicking on the icon is not going to work, because it'll load Gambus, but it won't load the library. So what we have to do is this, sudo Gambus3, and if we do that, then it will go in and it will run the uh, Gambus software and it will load and install the library so that we can run it. So again, it comes up with the tooltips for some reason. <laughs> Don't know why. So again, we're going to tell it a new project because now we've installed it a different way so it doesn't really have a clue where that file folder was. So we're going to tell it new project. We're going to tell it the GTK plus 2 application and tell it next. All right. And so it's like, where is it? <laughs> so what we want to do is we want to go to home, pi, and then we want to find our Gambus files here and tell it next. So that gets us into the right one. And we're going to call this one GPIO number one. Actually, we need to have uh, underscore. It doesn't allow spaces. There, that's better. And I'll just call this GPIO1. Now here you can, it's just a title. Alright, and we tell it OK. That's going to create our form, just like this, and we're good to go. So now we're going to go back to our file here, this uh, this web page, and we're going to do a few things for setup. The first thing we need to do is we need to tell it that there's a library there. So we need to copy this line right here, and we need to go up in um, 
our program code up in here. And sometimes it takes a while, uh, especially the first time you run it. It's just doing a lot of background stuff that it won't have to do in the future. All right, so we put this in here. There we go. So then we'll come over here. And uh, it's got a few things that we have to initialize here. And what we're doing here is we're putting in some code that's telling it how to initialize and at the end when we're done how to terminate so that we can enter and exit nice and clean and proper and all that good stuff. And I just want to clean these up a little bit like that. There we go. Then we'll come in here and uh, we're going to put uh, these two in. These, well, These are going to tell us what version it is and what hardware version, in case we want to pull that up and display it. Then, we're going to pull these up. And this is going to be how to set a pin, how to read a pin, and how to write a pin, which I'm sure is something we'll want to do. Now, we want a constant. Um, rather than having to remember what to type in all the time, these two lines will allow us to, when we pick a pin up here, like in set mode, if it was talking about pin 16, we could just go 16, and then over here we could tell it pi input or pi output. And instead of having to remember whether a 1 or a 0 is, is an input or an output, it just makes it a little bit easier. Then, when the program starts and this opens, we want to do something. And right now, you saw me click on that form open originally, and that's what created this. And there's nothing in there. So we're going to replace that with this code, which is going to check to make sure that we have everything valid and loaded in there. And if we do, um, everything will work fine. If not, it's going to disable the button. And then we need this, and this is used when the um, form is closed. All right. So right here we've got our basics for um, setting up the library, setting up a pin, whether it's an input or an output, and then determining whether it's loaded properly or not, and exiting the program. Now, I didn't put a lot of things in there, like clicking a button and making an LED come on and so forth, because that's going to be the next video. Right now, we just wanted to go through setting it up, and I'm going to try and keep these videos fairly short. So when we hit Run here, there's a problem. And the problem is, it's looking for a label 1, it's looking for a button 1. So let's double check our form. Oh! Oh! We didn't put them in. We put them in our last program, but we didn't put them in this program. So fine, we're going to create a label. And we're going to stretch that out. And I'm going to tell that label I want to have a border just to make it stand out a little bit. There we go. And I want to have a button, which is this one right here, right? I'm going to drag that over here. And I'm going to put in um, some text. And we're going to put in click me. Like that. So now we've got what we need to make it work. And so I'm going to hit this to run it. It comes up and you see the label says that it was initialized. And we're running version 79. So that works. We have it installed. We now have the capability to read and to write to GPIO, to generate pulse width modulation, and all kinds of other cool things, and we're going to get into that. I'm going to make some sample programs, show you how they work, and I'll step you through it all. This is where the excitement starts. Just a little bit of an added bonus. Um, you can go in to your desktop preferences, and you can change the image. So I had an image here. I installed it onto the pictures, and then I selected it. 
So I, I like that. It's just a little bit less strain on my eyes. And the other thing is making a desktop uh, clickable icon so that you can start Gambus. It's not that difficult. Uh, what we want to do is we want to come in here and we want to go to accessories and we want to go to text editor. All right, once we have that, then what we want to do is go uh, desktop entry. And then we want to give it a name. Then we want to tell it what to execute. And we're going to use LX Terminal. We're going to use the dash E command, and you can look that up if you're interested what it is. And then we're just going to go sudo gambus3. That'll execute our program. And then uh, it's going to want to know what type it is. And that's an application. Then we want an encoding. And that's going to be UTF-8. And then uh, whether we want it to run in terminal or not. We don't. And then categories. And I'm not putting any. All right. And then uh, the only other thing I might want to do is I might want to specify an icon. Uh, we'll use X sensors. And if you want to, you can find someone that you like better. Now, all we have to do is save this. And we want to save it to the desktop. Right? And we can give it any name we want. I'm going to call it Gambus 3. Right? But you give it the extension desktop. And then when you do that, and you hit save down here, it creates a little icon here. And so now when we want to run Gambus, um, we just click on this icon like this, and um, it'll come up. Oh, for the love of Pete. What well, wasn't both to do that? Hmm. What did I do wrong? That's weird. Let me see. Oh, I didn't put entry. It's e. If I could spell it, it would be great. E N T R Y. Entry. Now maybe it'll work. File save. Eh, it's so fussy. It's a computer. Ah, there we go. And it says, "What do you want to do?" And I'll just tell it execute it in terminal. And so now the terminal will come up and it'll automatically do its thing. Eh, I don't know whether that's faster or if it's faster to click on terminal and type pseudo gambus. Your choice, whatever you want to do. But that'll bring it up. So, yay! I will wait for it just to prove that it works. <laughs> Ta-da! And there's the last program that we created, and we can click on that, and it'll come up, and it'll run and do its thing, and life is good. All right. Have a great day. Later.